I don't know about you, but oftentimes I find that a user interface needs to display more information to the user so that they can make a decision on a smaller concept. This is where CQRS comes in, and that's what I'm talking about today. Hey, this is Vaughn Vernon. Welcome to my Design Accelerator tutorial. Let's dive into CQRS, but really simple CQRS. So what you see here is a common problem or common challenge. This is where the user needs to see information from multiple aggregates. And I'm talking about domain-driven design, tactical modeling tool, aggregate, the aggregate pattern. So we have to select multiple aggregate states out of the database and merge those together in some way to display on the user interface. And then when the user makes a decision, they're generally going to cause a write or an update to a third or fourth or fifth aggregate. In this case, I'm showing it as aggregate D, whereas they're getting information about the decision they'll make from aggregate A, B, and C types. When you compare the two strings familiar and aware of, you probably don't think of those as being equal. Yet what I find is when I consult or teach on the topic of domain-driven design, I find that people who say that they are familiar with CQRS tend to actually be more aware of CQRS because they don't understand even some of the very basics about it. So that's what I'm helping you with today is to understand the reason for CQRS, but also how it can be implemented in the simplest way possible. The basic idea behind CQRS is that we can optimize both sides of this. So optimize the reads or the queries for displaying to the user information so that they can make a decision. And then once they make a decision, optimize the writes or the creates or updates into the database. Just to reference my previous Design Accelerator tutorial, I talked about smashing bottlenecks. And this points to the need to look for the biggest constraint, the worst constraint in your system and this would definitely be one of them. So we need to optimize queries and we need to optimize the writes or updates or creations of new aggregates. And we can do so by exploiting the constraint that this kind of design renders. To keep this really simple and explain what CQRS is and how to use it, I first need to explain what CQS is. CQS stands for command query separation, and CQRS is based on CQS. Dr. Bertrand Meyer created the programming language named Eiffel, and Bertrand Meyer came up with several ideas that went along with the use of his language. One of the things that he came up with was design by contract. This is basically the use of interfaces in programming as top-level design. Another thing that he came up with is CQS, command query separation. What this means is that we have a general rule or pattern when we design an interface or a contract. CQS says that you may have command methods and query methods, but they must be separated as in command methods such as rename must not return a value when the command is carried out and query methods must not change the state of the system when they tell you the state of the system. So for example, if you want to change the name of a thing, you're going to use the rename method, which takes as a parameter a name that you're going to change the name to. On the other hand, you have a query method that can tell you what the current name is and you must not change the name when you query the name. In the same light, you do not tell the name of the thing upon changing it. So you must separate these two concepts, the commands and the queries, in a single interface. Therefore, you will have a number of command methods and a number of query methods, as many as you need to design the thing properly. Now that you understand what CQS is, Let's take a look at CQRS. What makes CQRS CQRS? Well, it stands for Command Query Responsibility Segregation. In the previous example of CQS, you saw that there was one interface, one contract, and that was the thing 
interface. In the case of CQRS, you then take that one interface and split it into two. Therefore, the responsibilities are broken up. They're segregated. There are command responsibilities and query responsibilities. So you now have Thing commands, and within Thing commands is the method rename. So when you want to rename the thing, you use the Thing commands interface and you use the rename method that takes the name that will be changed in the thing. If you want to find out what the name of the thing is, you then use the Thing queries interface or contract and you ask it for the name. That returns a string that is the most recent name or rename of the thing. So it's really pretty simple. The one thing becomes two responsibilities and they are segregated from one another, thing commands and thing queries. This should all be fitting together in your mind now. If we return to the original diagram that I showed, the user is going to now see optimized query results where the query model is optimized according to thing queries and the kinds of data that it needs to see in the user interface. And when the user submits some kind of command back to the command side, the command model, the thing commands will handle that and it will be optimized for commands. So in essence, you have not only two responsibilities, but those responsibilities are two separate separate models. Now, as you see here, there are two different databases represented, although this does not have to be the case. In fact, you can get a lot of benefits from CQRS, even if you maintain one single database with one set of transactions. In other words, when the command model is modified, you can, in the same transaction, modify the query model. This isn't always possible, and it certainly doesn't scale the way that two separate databases would because, well, you're just simply going to have a bottleneck in both the write transactions and in any read transactions. But you can also have separate databases, completely separate persistence, and these can scale independently now. The command model can scale to some horizontal scale and the query model can, can scale to a different kind of horizontal scaling. That's because you can treat these completely separately. One disadvantage to having two separate databases is that there will be an eventual consistency between these two models. That is when the thing commands or the command model is modified, it will take some amount of time for the query model to likewise reflect the changes that were just made in the command model. So there is going to be some lag between these two. And that lag can cause some complexities or challenges in the user interface. However, these days with the use of WebSockets, for example, and other technologies, getting a push back to the user when the query model is updated, when it is finally in sync with the command model, can be a, a big help to keeping the user interface up to date without the user actually seeing some kind of a lag in the differences between the command model and the query model reflected on the UI. One additional detail is how do the views that are queried and reflected or rendered onto the user interface generated? How do they end up in the query model? Well, it could be that the command model persists only events, or it may persist entire state. Whatever the case is, either of these can be projected from the command model into the query model as a view. So there will be any number of projections that are responsible for taking specific kinds of events or state and projecting them into the query model as views. Those then will be queried, preferably through a single key access, so key value pair basically, where the view is the value, and the ID will be used to retrieve the view and that will be returned or replied a response to the user interface, or it could be a WebSocket that's pushing this up here, or another push kind of technology into the browser or whatever the user interface is. And that is how the views are then both projected into, persisted, and then queried and rendered onto the user interface. 
I just want to clarify something about optimization. I think most times when we hear the word optimization, we're thinking about speed, maybe scale. But when I say optimization here, it could be that flexibility and convenience are more important optimizations when it comes to CQRS than speed and scale. Remember that because there is an eventual consistency, speed may not be quite as fast as we think it could be because you still have to project from the command model into the query model, unless you're using database views, which you can also do. So you could have a view on the state of a database table, for example, but we're generally talking about projecting into a completely different view model or query model of views. So don't necessarily consider optimization as an optimization for speed and scale, but rather consider that sometimes flexibility and convenience is even a more important optimization because it could be you really don't need high speed optimization, for example, but just having the flexibility and convenience that CQRS provides could be a big benefit and therefore an optimization. That's all the time that I have today. Thanks again for joining me at my Design Accelerator tutorial. It's brought to you by my company, Kalele. You can find us on the web at kalele.io. And I have some upcoming workshops, specifically one in May 2025. I welcome you to check out our information on that at kalele.io slash iddd workshop. I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, take care.